Meiosis is a type of cell division in which a parent cell divides to produce four sex cells. In males, this is how sperm is made, and in females, this is how eggs are made. In humans, this is also why sperm and egg cells only have half the amount of chromosomes that a regular cell has. So, for instance, all of your skin cells have 46 chromosomes, but if you're a female, your egg cells only have 23 chromosomes, and if you're a male, your sperm cells only have 23 chromosomes. So 23, obviously, is half of 46. So what meiosis does is it takes the original parent cell, as seen in this diagram, and it splits the chromosome number in half. And by doing so, it also produces four daughter cells. This might look similar to mitosis, which is a type of sim uh, cell division that we learned earlier this year, but mitosis produces two identical cells. Again, meiosis, however, produces four cells, and they're all different um, from each other and if you compare it back to the original cell here. We've been learning about Punnett squares, and this kind of ties together fertilization with Punnett squares, and why we use Punnett squares for genetics and uh, what it has to do with sperm and eggs and fertilization. So here's a Punnett square and on the top you guys are used to seeing the letters for a dominant or recessive allele um, and then on the side you would also see the letters for a dominant and recessive allele but what this diagram is showing you is that Meiosis is what creates sperm. Meiosis is what creates eggs in female. Um, and then the Punnett square shows you the result of fertilization. So when the egg and the sperm are fertilized, this uh, offspring that's in this box right here will have a certain allele combination according to what it inherits from its father's sperm and from its mother's egg. So here's another way of looking at it. Uh, here we have this parent cell, which we're going to call that the, the primary spermatocyte. And then we have this parent cell, which is the primary oocyte. In humans, uh, if this is a male right here, the cell that starts out with 46 chromosome that makes sperm is called the primary spermatocyte the cell in females that starts out with 46 chromosomes and makes the eggs is called the primary oocyte. So I want you guys to write that down on your paper. During meiosis, the primary oocyte in a female makes eggs. Now, the primary oocyte has 46 chromosomes, but when those chromosomes split into 23 and 23 amongst all the eggs, the alleles and the genes that were originally in this cell also split. The same thing happens in a male. During meiosis, the primary spermatocyte has a certain amount of alleles for all 46 chromosomes, but these split. And so this is why we end up with one letter that goes into this cell, one letter that goes into this cell. So let's just write this down. So here we have the primary oocyte. Let's really simplify it. Let's say that it started out with a full set of chromosomes and for one of the genes it had a capital T, lowercase t. Well when meiosis occurs and this cell splits into the eggs, these alleles also split. So the capital T might go with this egg, and the lowercase t might go with this egg. Now, depending on which one of these eggs produces the child, the child is either going to end up with the dominant allele or the recessive allele. The same thing is going to happen up here with the primary spermatocyte in a male. So let's write that down. So here we can see that um, the primary spermatocyte, which also, similar to the primary oocyte, 
started out with a capital T, lowercase t, but during meiosis, this cell split and produced sperm cells, and so the chromosome number also splits. So this capital T might go to this sperm cell, this lowercase t might go to this sperm cell. And depending on the combination of egg and sperm, you know, if it's this sperm that fertilizes this egg, then the offspring is going to end up with capital T, capital T. And you can go ahead and fill that in on your note sheet. But if it's this sperm that fertilizes this egg, then the offspring is going to have capital T, lowercase t. Um, just like if it's this sperm that fertilizes this egg, the result would be lowercase t, lowercase t, and the child would have the recessive trait. So on your sheet, there's some information. Go ahead and fill up the Punnett square if you haven't done so already. And I'd like to just read this out loud to you. It says, we've already learned about mitosis in which one cell divides into two daughter cells that are exact replicas of each other. Another type of cell division that only occurs in the ovaries in females and in testes in males is called meiosis. In meiosis, one parent cell divides to produce four sex cells, sperm or egg, that give rise to new individuals. Keep in mind that um, this simplified version of a Punnett square only shows you the primary spermatocyte and oocyte dividing to make two eggs or two sperm, but it is in fact four, as we'll see in just a minute. Since this only occurs in the reproductive organs, the cells that go through meiosis are very specialized. Sperm stem cells are called primary spermatocytes. These go through meiosis to produce four sperm cells. And egg stem cells are called primary oocytes. And these go through meiosis to produce four egg cells. So if you look to the other side of your notes, um, this is a more complicated version of a Punnett square. And basically what this shows you is that here we have the female. In this case, it's talking about a pea plant. And it shows you how this original cell splits. And you can see that the chromosome number gets split in half amongst the egg cells. Um, this is the original cell after the chromosomes are replicated. Um, but then once it splits, you can see that, you know, originally it had two chromosomes. Well, once these split, the eggs are either going to have a capital R, a lowercase r, a capital R, or a lowercase r, which is one allele only as compared to the two up here, so it is half the number of the original. Again, relating it back to humans, eggs have 23 chromosomes, whereas um, all the rest of your cells have 46 and same thing with the sperm over here so as you can see you get two capital R's here but they're not both listed in the Punnett square because that would be repetitive um, and then you have two lowercase R's and we only list one here and then the same thing with the sperm over here we have the capital R and we have the lowercase R and once you combine everything all together you can see what the offspring are so a Punnett square basically shows you the possible allele combinations after fertilization, which is when the egg and the sperm come together to make the offspring, to make the embryo, to make the baby, um, to make the child. During meiosis, the chromosome pairs separate. They end up in different sex cells. And this Punnett square shows you the separation of alleles that occur during meiosis. This is why we have such variation amongst organisms that go through sexual reproduction because you never know what chromosome is going to end up in the egg that makes the organism. It might be the capital R, it might be the lowercase r. At the same point, you don't know which chromosome is going to be in the sperm. It might be the capital R, it might be the lowercase r. This is why it's kind of luck of the draw when you're trying to figure out if a child is going to be a boy or a girl. Um, a female only has 
two X chromosomes. So when these split amongst all her eggs, a female's eggs will only contain X chromosomes. Whereas with a male, he has XY. So when his sperm cells divide through meiosis, some sperm might end up with X's, some sperm might end up with Y's. And depending on whether or not it's the sperm cell with an X that fertilizes the egg, or if it's the sperm cell with a Y that fertilizes the egg, you're going to end up with either a, a male offspring or a female offspring. So again, XX will give you a little girl, XY will give you a little boy. So the last thing I want you guys to think about is how are meiosis and Punnett squares related to one another? And basically, it's that Punnett squares show you all the possible genotypes in the offspring when the egg and the sperm combine.